Take a breather, men. I'm gonna make sure Mr. Lowe doesn't come back to life. My name is Duncan McIver. Well, Duncan McIver's a name that I'll remember for a long time, I'll tell you that. You've got a lot of guts, friend, riding into this fracas when you could see we were outnumbered. Well, if you hadn't been, you wouldn't have needed me. You're doing pretty well as it was. Name's Bill Hawks. I want to thank you. Same here. Duke Shannon. I'm headed for Fort Chacon. You wouldn't know how long it would take me to get there. Exactly four days, two and a half hours. Uh, give or take a few minutes for Indian fighting. We just came from there. No food. Yeah, in a couple of hours, we'll be heading right back. Work for a wagon train. Chris Hill's our wagon master. And Fort Chacon's our next stop. And you, McIver, will be traveling with us. The least we can do is see to it that you've done all the Indian fighting you're going to have to do between here and there. Well, now, I'd be a darn fool to turn down the safety of numbers, wouldn't I? Well, we'd better see if we can coax our horses back. That saddle's still better than walking. A while back, I heard you call those Indians Mr. Lowe. Mm-hmm. That's what the troopers call him. You in the army? Comes from Pope's essay on man. Lo, the poor Indian, whose untutored mind steals the fat cow, nor leaves the horse behind. Mm-hmm. Let's go find ourselves a wagon train, shall we? Sure. Shouldn't have told him that, Chris. We promised him a peaceful four days. <laughs> well, what's worrying me right now is supplies. Fort Chacon take care of us, Bill? Not very well. Commanding officer wasn't very friendly about it. Colonel Lipton growled something about it being enough trouble keeping his fighting troops in supplies without having to feed every wagon train that comes by. He said we could fill up our water barrels and have to get the rest of the stuff at Comanche Corners. Comanche Corners? Another one of those places that spring up outside the gates of a stockade to build the troopers out of what little money they have and the wagon train people. Well, we'll find a place to store your gear when we camp tonight, MacGyver. Thanks, Mr. Hale. Let's roll, boys. Whitey, my friend, don't you know that nighttime is the time designated for the resting of bones made heavy by the day's toil? Hmm? Garrett, I don't like staying around here. Not this close. For a good day's ride from Chacon, that's far enough. It ain't the fort I'm talking about, and you know it. Don't tell me you're afraid of ghosts at your age. It ain't no ghost that's going to be wondering what we're doing here in the same area, at the same time, and so close. Simmer down, Whitey. Nobody's going to connect us to anything. Unless we both start sprouting Indian feathers. Besides, there's little sense in pulling these heavy loads any farther to find a wagon train that's destined to pass through this way anyway. Sit down.
Good evening, my friend. I wonder if you might spare me a few moments of your time. I don't believe I've made your acquaintance, mister. <laughs> Very discerning of you, sir. I have not had that pleasure. You ain't with the train either, are you? Not strictly speaking. However, my wagons are only 50 yards away at this very moment. Who are you? I, sir, am your benefactor, who is going to show you how you can save much of your hard-earned cash which you've acquired by the sweat of your brow. I'm a tradesman, a traveling merchant who abhors the thievery of my less scrupulous brothers in Comanche Corners, where, it is my guess, you will be forced to purchase your supplies for this leg of your long journey west. Are you selling goods? That, sir, is an understatement. I have two wagons overflowing your sideboards with foodstuffs and goods of all descriptions. Fair prices, you say? More than fair, sir, more than fair. I guarantee it. Well, show me. With pleasure, sir. Just read. You made a good purchase, folks. Better than you could have made at uh, Comanche Connors. Have a good trip. I'm sorry, my good man. But you're too late. I deeply regret that it is not within my power to supply every man, woman, and child among you. Give them back their money. I don't believe I understand you, sir. If you can read, you do. The U.S. Army. U.S. Army. USA. See it? Of course I can see it. But what better assurance is there, my friend, that these fine people have made purchases of goods of the best quality possible? It's all stolen from the Army. Every bit of it. Not by me, sir. Not by me. I purchased it in good faith from a man who gave me an excellent wholesale price. To which these good people will testify, I passed on the savings to them. It's still stolen merchandise. And if so, I abhor the thought of it. But then there are many things that happen in this life of which uh, we do not approve. But we, nevertheless, are powerless to alter them. For we are destined to live within a society possessed by both good and evil. There's a lot of truth in what he says, Shannon. Now, most of us here are in any position to be too choosy. Either we buy these supplies at a reasonable price, or we get cheated out of more of our stake than we can afford at Comanche Corners. Look, Hanson, Chris Hale has ridden ahead to Comanche Corners to see if he can't get us some decent prices. What you're asking me to do is close my eyes to the fact that you're buying stolen goods. What difference does it make? If we don't buy this stuff, somebody else will. It won't be returned to the Army no matter what we do. Besides, sir, the purchases have already been made. Now, it takes a dishonorable man to back out of a deal once consummated. And I'll bet there's not much you don't know about dishonorable men. Well, I'll tell you folks this. You're all gonna be held individually responsible for having this stuff in your possession. And don't expect anybody on the wagon train to stand behind you. Is that clear? Yeah. Yeah. My advice to you two is to get away from this train and stay away. Very good advice, too, sir. Considering our wagons are empty. Get it. <laughs> Kept him up kind of late, didn't you? <laughs> yes, I did. How are things down the line, Duke? Right. Did right around check. Yeah. I'm just not sure I did the right thing. About what? Uh, there's a couple of characters sold two wagons full of merchandise to Babcock, Hanson, and a few others. Back a ways behind the train. When I got there, the wagons were empty, all sold out. I don't know whether I should have let them keep the stuff or not. Something wrong with it? Not a thing. Except it's all stamped USA. U.S. Army goods? Every bit of it. Staples, tools, 
harness, everything. The men selling the stuff, were they troopers? No. Well, you know what I think? I think that stuff was stolen. I'm surprised you didn't think of that, too. The thought did cross my mind, Charlie. Well, good. You shouldn't have let him buy it, Duke. He'd already bought it. Besides, there's a limit to how far we can go with wet nursing these folks. They're old enough to make their own mistakes. The men that sold them the goods, what did you do with them? I ran them off, told them not to come back. You ran them off? What interest do you have in this, McIver? You should have held them. How? I'm not the law. Do you remember everyone that bought the goods? All the names? Now, wait just a minute. You know, this is uh, more our business than it is yours. Do you remember all the names? Sure. I don't see what difference it makes. Mac, uh, you know, we don't want to seem ungrateful for what you did for us, but uh, don't you think you're pushing a little bit hard into something that's out of your concerns? Oh, maybe you're right, Bill. Unless maybe there's uh, something you'd like to talk about. No. Well, maybe we'd better just forget about it now. Mac. Mac. Charlie, don't you think we're getting a little too far from Kay? We gotta get firewood, don't we? Yeah, but I keep remembering how Bill and Dick said there were Indians in these trees. This kind of trees, you couldn't even hide a papoose. Huh. Charlie? Yeah, where? How many? Charlie, look, look over there. It means there are Indians around here. No, but it means they've been here and done the dirty work and left. I better go tell somebody. Wait a minute. You gotta give them help, but not death. Come on, Barney, we can't do them any good. Judging from the stripes on their pants, must have been a sergeant and a corporal. A sergeant and an officer, Duke. Considering how young he is, there's probably a lieutenant. And there's a sergeant, McIver, inch and a half stripes, just like the ones I used to wear. They changed them a little less than a year ago, Bill. Inch and a half stripes are worn by officers now, the one inch by sergeants. Look at their eyes. You're right, Mac. No man's gonna die face up to the sun with his eyes open. Lips are dry and burned like the rest of them. But they're not blistered. When you get thirsty and you got a hot sun like this, you lick your lips and it makes blisters. But you gotta be alive to do that. Those men were dead before they were staked out. They what? Staking is for torturing live captives. This wasn't done by Indians. But somebody sure wanted it to look that way. Well, we better get to burying them, I guess. You better take their clothes. Maybe somebody at Fort Chacon can identify them. That's a good idea. Get the shovel, Charles. Yeah. You sure don't act like you're a stranger to the ways of the Indian. Or to the Army, for that matter. Oh, I've had a little experience, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Necessarily deceiving you about this. We're allowed to wear civilian clothes when we're off duty. And I didn't want people asking a lot of questions about why I was being sent to Fort Chacon. It's no, it's no secret that it's the Army's disciplinary unit. And there's nobody asking any questions now either. Well, I am. I was wondering, uh, why you decided to put your uniform on at this particular time. I haven't been on official business until now, Bill. Duke, will you show me who the people are who bought those army goods? That's what I figured. Forget it, Duke. I'll have to find it myself, then. You leave the people on this train alone. You're not about to take in their property. I'm sorry, Bill. 
But it's my legal right to confiscate all government property found in the possession of civilians, no matter how that property was acquired. It's also my sworn duty. Don't quote the Army book to me, Lieutenant. I was there once, too. Now, you keep your nose out of this train. Those people paid good money for that stuff. And that stuff, as you call it, is needed. It's needed by a bunch of mangy misfits who are stupid enough to put on a uniform and live in a dirty, isolated prison called an army post. They make $13 a month to risk their lives or lose them every day. Just to keep this country open and safe enough for people like you to drive your wagons through. They're fighting a war, Mr. Hawks. A full-blown 100% war. You know it and I know it. But the people in Washington who appropriate the supplies don't know it because Congress has never seen fit to acknowledge it as a war. The Army needs its supplies, Mr. Hawks. Every single bit of it, including what's on your wagon train. Show them where it is, Duke. Well, I shall presume to consider it a tribute to my integrity, Lieutenant Carter, that you did not count the money. It's a point. You could hold out on me. I couldn't stop you. <laughs> quite true, quite true. But let me assure you... Forget it, Garrett. I don't have time to waste listening to a speech. Risky enough just getting out of the fort to meet you. Lieutenant Harris out looking for evidence. Well, I wouldn't waste any time worrying about Lieutenant Harris either. Maybe you didn't hear me. He's not at the fort. Harris and Sergeant Fuma are out searching this whole area right now. Trying to get a lead on the goods you just unloaded. They've been gone for three days. Mm. And it will be an eternity before they return. They're dead, Carter. Dead. Send somebody to tell that wagon master he'll have to circle up outside the stockade. I can't have the routine of this post disrupted with all those teams and wagons. Yes, sir. And tell him that he and his people are otherwise welcome to make use of the facilities.
try to report in, I'll turn the supplies over to the sergeant, and you can get your wagons back. I wish there was a way we could get the money back for the folks who bought and paid for the stuff. Yeah. Lieutenant McIver here to report for duty, sir. Brad. Brad Carter. Mac, I've been expecting you. Colonel, this is First Lieutenant Duncan McIver, just arrived from Fort Collins. Yes, I have a letter from your commanding officer. My travel order, sir. That is. I don't believe I told you, sir. Lieutenant McIver was my roommate at the point. I wouldn't tell anybody else, either. That is, don't uh, go out of your way to remind your fellow officers you're a product of West Point. I'm not ashamed of it, sir. No. Nor am I ashamed of the fact that I never saw the inside of the place. I see, sir. Did you find it necessary to bring your laundry in with you, McIver? It's not my laundry, sir. Well, do you have any objections to telling me whose it is? I'd be glad to, sir, if I knew. Explain yourself, Lieutenant. Yes, sir. These clothes were found on the bodies of two dead cavalrymen who'd been staked out. You could have told me that in the first place. Why didn't you? I felt the colonel preferred to find out about it in his own manner. Well, just how would you define my manner, Lieutenant? With all due respect, sir. Unnecessarily harsh. Is that a fact? Well, let me tell you something, Shavetail. This whole country is harsh. Fighting Indians is harsh. Life on any army post is harsh. But harsh words will be the last of your problems here at Fort Chicago. Have you never heard of Dog Troop, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. It's full of bad boys, Lieutenant. Misfits who should have been drummed out of the army, but for some ridiculous reason were sent here instead for us to hammer into fitting size. And believe me, Lieutenant, that hammering consists of more than harshness. So if some of it is rubbed off on me, you must forgive me. Your commanding officer at Fort Collins has made me aware of the reason for your transfer to Dog Troop. Not a very soldierly crime they accused you of, was it, Lieutenant? Not if true, sir. True or not, I will not tolerate any such offense on this post. Clear? Very clear, sir. Now, if anybody from Dog Troop asks you why you're here, you tell them that, uh, well, you slugged a major or something. They'll respect that more than they will the truth. You'll report to Lieutenant Harris. Begging the Colonel's pardon, sir, I have reason to believe that Lieutenant Harris is dead, Sergeant Fulmer also. Oh. I meant to ask you if they'd returned. No, sir, neither has the dog troop patrol that went out looking for them. Where did you find the dead men, Lieutenant? About 25 miles east of there, sir. I was traveling with a wagon train. They hadn't been there long. Just long enough to be tortured, hmm? I don't think so, sir. There was evidence that they'd been killed before they were staked out. Ridiculous, Lieutenant. The Indian... Exactly what I mean, sir. They were trailing stolen army goods. The men were unidentified, but were white. There were two men in the area, sir. They were selling army goods to the wagon train people. When I found out about it, I confiscated it. Two wagons full. They're outside right now. You had all this information and withheld it until now? Why didn't you speak? No, never mind. Colonel Lipton, sir. I'd like to request permission to continue Lieutenant Harris's investigation in my free time. What free time, Lieutenant McIver? With Harris dead, you will assume command of Dog Troop. And take my word for it, you'll wish you had more time just for that job alone. But, sir, they were seen at the wagon train. It's a lead I could follow. You will follow my orders, Lieutenant. You will take command of Dog Troop, and that is all. Is that clear? Very clear, sir. 
Lieutenant Carter, assign another officer to carry through the investigation. Yes, sir. Dismissed. Oh, and uh, take that uh, laundry with you. Looks like they had their work cut out for them. So is Mike. What's the D troop, Mike? Your new command. Oh, what's left of it? A friend of Max. I'll see you later, Duke. Sure. You aren't gonna like it here, Mac. Oh, I'll probably get used to it like everybody else. That's the point. Nobody ever does. Sergeant? Yes, sir. I've got some bad news for you. Any worse news than I've got for the Colonel, sir? Patches. Hit and run. I couldn't find the lieutenant or former either. Lieutenant McIver did. They're dead. I was afraid of it. Well, that means we have to break in another shave tail, sir. <laughs> You're already looking at him, Sergeant. Only I thought shave tails were supposed to be second lieutenants. No offense, Brad. Here at Fort Chacon, sir, all new officers are shave tails. Until they prove their bell shark. It's your first sergeant, Jake Orley, Lieutenant Duncan McIver. Sir. Jake. Major Jacob Orley. Not anymore, sir. He's the man you're thinking about. Couldn't they do any better than first sergeant for the man whose cavalry tactics we study at the academy? I surrendered my federal commission to follow Alabama out of the Union, sir. I can't say they're wrong and not giving it back to me right now. But you're different. No different than any other Confederate, sir. Except the Army's all I know. So I'll settle for stripes until the Army changes their policy. Well, if you can look at it that way, there's no reason why I shouldn't. I'm privileged to have you in my command. Sergeant? Thank you, sir. I'll see you later after the troops have had a chance to rest up. Yes, sir. I guess I better get you billeted. Hey, that's right. You know, there's nothing like having a personal friend of the action when it comes to getting decent quarters. Now he's there. <laughs> to have to be in the Colonel's whipping boy for six months, doing his paperwork, his dirty work, as well as riding her on the daily lives of this reservation. I, I wish some friend of mine had the job instead of me. I think Lucinda likes the idea of being married to the mayor of the town. Lucinda? You married? Didn't I tell you? You did not. 
Well, what's the matter? Are you ashamed of her or something? Well, Lucy, wait till you see her. She's the prettiest woman on the post. <laughs> All right, what's so funny? Oh, I'm just remembering what my old roommate always used to say. No marrying for me. The Army's gonna be my wife. Well... Of course I've heard you mention Duncan MacGyver. As a matter of fact, he must have told me everything there is to know about his roommate at the point. Everything? Well, everything a gentleman can tell a lady. <laughs> I can't tell you how good it is to have friends in a place like this. You're so right. It's really dreary here after Georgia. Lucinda, I imagine Mac would like to get moved in. Yeah, I left my gear in the wagon train. Quarters all right? If not, you can always rank out one of your juniors. And let the bricks go falling all the way down the line? No, this is fine. I will not hear of your being alone on your first night. Now, you're going to have supper with us, you hear? Well, thanks. Brad and I do have a lot of talking to catch up on. Wonderful. Mac, uh, before you go, maybe you could tell me how many people on the wagon train got a good look at the end who sold them the army goods. Oh, six or eight, I guess. Duke Shannon could tell you all you want to know. He talked to them. Probably still find him over the quartermaster. Yeah, I'll do that. Well, I'll see you tonight. Okay. Right. What's this all about, Bradford? I came over here to tell you that Harris and Fulham have been found. Garrett and Whitey killed them. I guess they had to or get caught. Were they caught? No, I saw them last night. Bradford, you didn't tell me you got the money. I didn't want to wake you last night. You were still asleep when I left this morning. Where is it now? Blood money is at home. Bradford, don't talk like that. Look, I never intended for this to end up in murder. Well, you didn't kill him. Honey, can't we just stop this now? Honey, can't you stick it out just another six months until we have enough money to get out of this army? Then we can go to a civilized place, have a business, and be respectable again, the way I used to be. Don't you understand? It's dangerous now. Redford, don't you think you owe me that? Or don't you think I'm worth taking a little risk for? Uh, you know that isn't so. Seems like you'd consider what you do think about me before you go entertaining a thought like quitting. I love you, and I'd do anything for you. You know that. I love you too, Bradford, and I want you to make something out of yourself. Since Lieutenant Harris is gone, there's no one investigating things, is there? No, the Colonel asked me to assign someone else. But he didn't tell you who? No. Then there's nothing to worry about. Just assign yourself. Couldn't be any safer than that, now could it? account for, sir. This is your new commanding officer, First Lieutenant Duncan MacGyver. At ease, men. Well, gives me pleasure to see so many smiling faces. I appreciate such pleasant acceptance on your part. And I want you all to know that I'm proud to take command of the outfit that has the reputation of being the toughest in the Army. But, uh, I was wondering which one of you was the toughest. You asking me? Are you asking me, sir? Oh, uh, yes. Sir. Which one? Ain't you ever heard of Otto Muller? Sir? I keep forgetting. Oh, yes. Sir. The limey means me. Limey means me, sir. I am the farrier. I got big muscles from working the forge. There is not one man who wants to fight Otto. Sir. Is that right, boys? That's right, you know. 
Otto Muller, huh? Yeah, that's right. Well, Muller, what do you think it would take to convince you to call your commanding officer, sir? What do you think? You're guaranteed immunity from punishment if you'd care to prove that you're still the toughest man in this outfit. Because I doubt it. Watch this, boys. <laughs> Now, which of you claims to be the second toughest man in this big mouthed bunch of recruits? Fighting outfit, huh? Well, you'll have to prove it to me. March him back to the barracks, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Hawkins, Jones, take care of Goliath over there. Detail, Dean Hutt. Right, face. Hold, hold, hold. <laughs> Lucinda, you spoil me. I won't ever be satisfied with that officer's mess again. Did you hear that, Johnny? He used to work for a very famous chef, but he refuses to tell us where. Oh. Well, wherever you learned it, Johnny, congratulations. That's a meal I won't forget for a long time. Well, that's kind of you, sir. And congratulations to you, too, sir. It's all over the post how you whipped out a molar today. Well, now, if I'd known that, I would have been a bit more careful. <laughs> <laughs> well, good night. Uh, Johnny. Thanks for a wonderful evening. I love you both, but I'm tired. Oh, Mac, we just talked our way up to the second year. I'm sure it gets spicier later on. Done a lot of traveling today. Brad, I hope there's a good bed in those quarters you assigned me. Well, that I can't guarantee. Say, did you see Duke today? Duke? Duke Shannon, the scout with the wagon train. Oh, yes, yes, I did. I don't suppose he happened to see those two men. They wouldn't dare show their faces as long as the wagon train's here. Yeah, the wagon train leaves first thing tomorrow. You know, I was wondering if you asked him, he might find a way to stay around for a few days to identify those men if they show up. I already asked him, said he couldn't leave his work. I don't guess we can blame him. It's not his problem, it's ours. Well, maybe if I talked to him. We got to be pretty good friends, you know. I don't think it would do any good at all. He was very adamant about it. Said his wagon master would fire him if he stayed. Besides, the colonel gave you strict orders to stay out of this. And believe me, Mac, it wouldn't do any good to buck him. Well, just... Uh... Asking Duke for a favor isn't investigating. Colonel Lipton wouldn't interpret it that way, I promise you. I don't go getting yourself into any trouble on my account. Duncan, I thought you said you were tired. Oh, <laughs> Lucinda, I am. I'm going to bed. All right. Good night. Good night. Well, that's all I need is for him to meddle in this. He's going to be all right. He said he was going right to bed, and the wagon train will be gone by the time Reveille sounds in the morning. Yeah. Well, you're sure a light sleeper. I just don't like sleeping so close to teepees. Oh, they're friendly, I think. But you're never sure, are you? Nope, never. I was looking for you after I unloaded the wagons. Well, I had a few things to do. I was going to catch you before you left in the morning. Wonder if you'd do me a favor, Duke. Now, how could I say no after the one you did for me? Well, you already said no to it once today. Oh? It sure helped Brad Carter out if you could see fit to stay around for a while to help identify those uh, merchants if they show up. And I think they will. 
Apparently, these thefts have been going on for some time. They'd have to have a contact in the army. Well, I, uh... No, before you say anything, let me say that I know what a big thing I'm asking of you. I'll do it. You see, Brad and I were, well, we we're old friends. What did you say? I was looking for you today to see if you thought it was a good idea. But I shouldn't have gotten those folks mixed up in this, so I, I want to do what I can to... What's the matter? Well, you talk like this is the first time you've discussed it with anybody. It is. Not with Brad Carter. No. I only saw him once when I met him. Is he the one I'm supposed to have turned down? Mm-hmm. Did he say that? Well, then he lied. Why would he do that? I don't think I care to say. Not out loud, anyhow. See everybody who comes and goes from here. As long as they don't see you. You take the cart, Duke. Oh, I'm not used to such comforts. Probably wouldn't sleep anyway. <laughs> Mac, I know he's your friend, but you haven't seen him in a long time. People change. And he, uh, he did lie to you. Maybe he had some other reason. Maybe. Now, well, what business is it of mine, anyway? I was ordered to stay out of it. Why haven't you got sense enough to do just that? Why don't I let you go on with the wagon train? Why am I so darn anxious to prove Brad is guilty? You're not. You're trying to prove he's innocent. What if he isn't? What do I do, turn him in? Do I go to the colonel and say, I have evidence Lieutenant Carter is responsible for all these thefts? Thefts that lead directly to the murder of two men, indirectly to several others who went looking for him? Oh, never mind that we're all friends, all roommates. That we were like brothers for four years. I am an army officer, true to my oath. I simply saw my duty, and I did it, Colonel, sir. Brad Carter could be executed for a crime like this, Duke. tired of being cooped up in this place. I'll go get the wagons, and we'll get back to business. No, Hardy. We'll wait for Carter to give us the word. The train's leaving. It's safe now. But we don't know what that lieutenant learned or what he said before he died. Now have patience, friend. <laughs> you might live longer.
officers take charge of your companies? See you tomorrow, Lieutenant. Right. Dismiss! Lieutenant, uh, hmm? seems like uh, something's been on your mind all day. Anything you care to talk about? Oh, no, it's, it's, it's nothing. Sorry. Uh, excuse me. Brad? Brad, I've got to talk to you. The food was a little rich last night. You have trouble sleeping? I'm puzzled, Brad. Answer me a question, will you? Sure, sure. Why didn't you want me to talk to Duke Shannon last night? I told you why I didn't. Didn't ring true. There's something about this whole thing that doesn't ring true. What are you getting at? An answer? I've got to have an answer. I'm not accusing you of anything, Brad. Understand that. But I've got to know. Got to know what? It just didn't seem likely that Duke Shannon wouldn't have made some arrangements to stay if it asked him. He, well, you might say he owes me a favor. You said if I asked him to. Did you? I told you I did. But why were you so anxious for me to stay out of it? You were even nervous. Must be some reason you're not pursuing this investigation like you should. Some reason you're handling it yourself instead of assigning it to another officer. Men have been killed, Brad. And you didn't even want me to help you with the only lead you've got. A witness. You are accusing me, aren't you? Of what? Tell me what, Brad? Of being implicated in the thefts. No. I just want you to tell me you're not. I just want you to explain your actions, that's all. Why should I explain anything to you? Because we're friends. But you're not acting much like a friend right now. Are you protecting somebody? No. Are you in some kind of... No! Trouble? I'm just trying to help you, that's all. Look, I don't need your kind of help. You heard the Colonel's order. Stay out of this investigation. You never did see Duke Shannon, did you? Why don't you try and catch up with that wagon train and ask him? Only take you a couple days there and back. Only cost you a court-martial for disobeying orders and being absent from duty without permission. Why don't you do it, friend? Brad, uh, do you remember what you told me about why Duncan was thrown out of Fort Collins and sent here? What's that got to do with this? Look, I told you Max suspects me. Well, that's why it's important. We may be able to use that information against him. Are you out of your mind? That's a confidential matter. And we got enough trouble about the Colonel finding out I told you that. You're not making sense. I'm not about to let anyone know that I'm aware of it. But what if that same thing happened here now? Colonel Lipton would court martial him, that's what. And he'd be in his grace, wouldn't he? And very little he said would mean very much now, would it? Honey, all the witnesses are gone and we're in the clear. Except for your friend, Duncan MacGyver. All we have to do is put him in his proper place. We're back in business again. I couldn't do it. Bradford, have you forgotten how much you owe me? All we have to do is have Duncan over for another one of Johnny's dinners. You go get Johnny, and I'll get Duncan. But don't come back until after Duncan is already here. Everything's gonna be fine. Well, uh, maybe they'll show up tomorrow. Don't tell them where they are. You don't even know the train's left yet. Lucinda. 
Doc and Bradford told me about the words you two had, and I'm terribly upset about it. Well, I'm sorry, too, Sunday. Well, I thought you would be, and that's why I came. You two have been good friends for so long, I just can't see it ending up this way. I'm sure you can work it out. Bradford wants to, if you do. Come with me. I'm sure we can talk it out all together. Bradford wants you to, and so do I. Well, that's all I wanted to do, Lucinda. Of course I'll come. Good. wonderful time last night. It's really hard to believe that you and Bradford had trouble. Oh, well. I hope there's not any trouble between us. You and me, I mean. Well, I don't see why there should be, Lucinda. Well, I certainly hope there never is. I'm not so sure I understand what you mean. Collins and now again here. Well, the one would seem to lend credence to the other. Not when the second was designed to coincide with the first, sir. Designed? Your classmate, your old friend, would contrive such a situation? Why would he do anything like that? Maybe he'd like to tell you, sir. Crimes follow a pattern, so I presume your defense at Fort Collins was the same? No, sir. Well, you did deny that you were found in the arms of the captain's wife by her husband, didn't you? I did not deny that, sir. Then you were guilty? Not as charged, sir. It was with the lady's permission, but without the knowledge that she was married to the captain or anyone else. Well, you certainly knew that Lucinda Carter was married when you were holding her and she was struggling to escape and crying out, stop it, stop it. But, sir... Isn't that what you said you saw and heard, Private Bivens? Well, speak up, soldier. Is it or is it not what you said? Yes, sir. You'll get your chance to argue the point, Lieutenant. I'm calling a special court-martial tomorrow morning. Meanwhile, you're relieved of duty. Place yourself under arrest and find yourself to quarters. Dismissed. conviction of the unmarried soldier makes the best fighting man. He's spared an emotional scene of parting every time he rides out of the stockade. Unfortunately, wives are permitted to be part of this war. And that fact alone is the source of enough trouble, even without a man like you around. But one, just one philanderer who makes a habit of trying to share his fellow officers' wives can create more havoc within an army reservation than a whole band of Apaches. And that's why I warned you I would not tolerate such a thing at Fort Chico. And you have been adjudged guilty of having ignored that warning. Guilty of conduct unbecoming an officer. I therefore sentence you to the maximum penalty authorized to this court to be confined for six months in the United States Army prison at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, to suffer two-thirds loss of pay for six months. Sentence to be carried out at once. Well, how it makes you feel to have a man you trusted turn against you, but you gotta speak up. Tell him what you suspect about Carter. 
Maybe they'll put off the sentence until we can prove it. If you don't do something, they're going to put you on that stagecoach and you're going to be gone. Then it'll be too late. Mac, Carter's not going to confess. He's not going to do one thing to keep you out of Leavenworth. I thought I heard somebody else in here. What are you doing here? Just leaving. Duke, thanks for trying to help. How'd you get in here anyway? You figure it out. I never had what you'd call a best friend myself. But if I did, I don't reckon I'd try to do harm to his woman. share my contempt for MacIver's offense, as well as my interest in seeing an influence such as he represents depart from our company. Come along. Leave now, Major. MacIver. Sir? I want you to know that I had great hopes for you the way you took command of D Troop. For that reason, this development is an even greater disappointment for me. The colonel isn't the only one that's disappointed. Isn't that right, Brad? but I can't. What in the blazes are you talking about? Mark knew I couldn't do it. He knew it better than anybody else. You've been a man's roommate for four years. He knows what you can do and what you can't. Lucinda should have known it, too. Then she was never my friend. A friend is a valuable thing, Colonel. Friend is a person you try not to hurt. You even fight for him. Last thing you do is scheme against him. Try to discredit his word so it doesn't mean a thing. Isn't that right, Colonel? I think you better say exactly what you mean. Your disappointment is for the wrong man, Colonel. That's what I mean. 
Why? Don't you know? Don't you know that an adjutant keeps the guards' rosters, that he can gain access to any and every building on the military posts, including the quartermasters and the commissary? Don't you know how easy it is for him to steal a place empty? Mac knew it. He couldn't prove it, but he knew it. How could you believe a man convicted of the contemptuous thing he was accused of? You should have been more careful when you selected your adjutant card. I will take immediate steps to have your verdict reversed, Lieutenant MacIver. And you have my sincere apology. Sorry, Brad. Very sorry. <laughs> 